species. Okay. Uh, physiological changes of pregnancy like increased metabolic demand, blood viscosity, hyperpagulability gets aggravated in patients with sickle cell disease. Leading to increased incidence of complication. The main complication we are worried about is the vascular occlusive crisis or sickle cell crisis, or acute chest syndrome, osteonecrosis, hepatic necrosis, leg ulcers, or thromboembolic phenomena. And vascular occlusion occurs in placenta also, which can lead to illus fibrosis, necrosis, infarction and impaired utero placental circulation, it leads to chronic fetal hypoxia and adverse fetal outcome. So patients with sickle cell disease, both the mother as well as the baby is in danger of vascular occlusion. So it is not only the mother, the placenta also can suffer the same fate. Coming to the obstetric and non-obstetric complications in this patient, it is uh, uh, it's associated with increased risk of preeclampsia and eclampsia. And there is the, uh, some reports say that they can develop gestational diabetes also. But uh, some people deny that. And microvascular damage and decreased uteroplacental circulation, which results in spontaneous abortion or stillbirth, is very common. And there can be an exacerbation of the pre existing anemia because of the physiological anemia also. This may require uh, prior blood transfusions and uh, the sickle cell disease complications increase during pregnancy. Again, as we have told you, because of the hyperpagulability and defective splenic functions lead to orthosplenectomy, which is superimposed with the immune compromised state of pregnancy. So, risk of infections like pneumonia, pyelonephritis, urinary tract infection, and even postpartum infections are quite common. And pregnancy being a hyperpyagulable state predisposes to even deep vein thrombosis and cerebral venous thrombosis also. What are all the perinatal morbidities that you can come with? Anemia in the mother causes impaired placental circulation. So, the nutrition of the fetus and the oxygenation of the fetus suffers, and uh, this will result in IUGR. And uh, especially in patients who also have maternal nutrition problems like low income group or repeated pregnancies, reduce the uh, fetal growth and the cost perinatal outcome, adverse perinatal outcome. And preterm deliveries is very common. Premature labor and premature delivery is common, and but maybe it is attributed to the cost of landing. Now, how do you manage adverse events in pregnancy in patients with sickle disease? There are six things that you have to manage. First is the painful crisis. So, pregnant women who develop vasoclusive crisis should be hospitalized. They should be given adequate bed rest and fluid should be. A fluid intake should be monitored and adequate hydration ensured. For pain relief, you can use paracetamol and other NSAIDs. If pain is not relieved, you can use narcotic, but nephridine should be avoided because of associated toxicity and risk of convulsions. The second problem is acute chest syndrome. The pregnant women can present with severe cough and chest pain. And they may have infiltrates in chest x ray, leukocytosis. Blood and sputum culture should be done to ascertain if there are any secondary infections. And appropriate antibiotic and oxygen support hydration is required to be given blood transfusion also. The third problem is pulmonary embolism when presenting with chest pain and respiratory distress with normal chest x ray may have. Uh, uh, if the features of acute chest syndrome are not there, you may have to suspect pulmonary embolism in your patient. So the treatment is to start them on low molecular weight heparin as early as possible. And then uh, the diagnosis uh, is not, uh, usually you do LHC before elevated D dimer. It will not be present in this condition. So it is a question of clinical diagnosis. Coming to the next problem is stroke, which can be uh, uh, ischemic or infarctive and hemorrhagic. And 
the only treatment for this is emergency exchange transfusion and not like you are even if it is a ischemic stroke you don't give uh, uh, anticoagulants and thrombolysis is not helpful that is the difference between the normal stroke and this stroke because the impact is due to the pickling of the rbcs and not due to the clot that form then coming to hematological complication anemia is the most important complication and it may be exacerbated due to repeated blood loss and bone marrow suppression and nutritional deficiencies the prophylactic red blood transfusion is done as it is believed that the risk of complication like stroke acs uh, sequestration is decreased but the royal college of gynecology do not recommend the same but some centers do give prophylactic red blood transfusion but if the hemoglobin is less than 7 there is definite indication for transfusion to correct that anemia and health syndrome may develop if the patient has got preeclampsia with a sickle cell disease then we have to watch out for the presence of health syndrome in those patients and but uh, uh, health syndrome can be managed conservatively or by urgent delivery depending upon the gestational age of the fetus then they are more prone for infection major sites of infection as i said earlier is urinary tract and respiratory system and during infection again they can develop a crisis because of fever acidosis that lead to sickling and worsening of anemia so early administration of appropriate antibiotic is very very important and they can sometimes develop acute cholecystitis also during pregnancy with fever chills and right upper quadrant pain and such attacks may simulate something like fetal hepatopathy or a crisis in the or uh, micro occlusion in the hepatic region or hepatitis and hepatic sequestration so liver function test and ultrasound assessment will help in the correct diagnosis so you can do an ultrasound to find an inflamed gall bladder or a gall bladder with stones but uh, treatment is antibiotic symptomatic management and then you do an elective cholecystectomy after the, uh, the delivery and pregnancy management in uh, it is cell first of all you have to do what is called pre conceptual care so all women who know that they have sickle cell disease and who are in the reproductive age should have provided with the relevant information on what are all the complications where sickle cell can produce in pregnancy and what measures should be taken for better maternal and fetal health outcome this counseling is very 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 important and a complete medical and social history should be obtained including her vaccination status current medication and other comorbid condition or any drug abuse western world and uh, african world people where this uh, condition is more common they may be drug users also so vaccination against all encapsulated organisms like neisseria uh, streptococcus and haemophilus all should be updated hepatitis b and influenza vaccine also should be given and they should be started on folic acid even once daily both pre conception and through for pregnancy and drugs like hydroxyurea angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors and iron chelators should be discontinued which are given for control of sickle cell crisis at uh, at least 3 months before they plan their conception because they can produce teratogenic effects screening for complications like pulmonary hypertension which is very very important in 2d echocardiography so this one part uh, forgot to mention in serious complication there can be micro thrombi in the pulmonary circulation which can lead to pulmonary hypertension and right ventricular problem and retinal screening for proliferative retinopathy iron overload renal and liver disease all these things are in very very severe cases of sickle cell and they can develop sickle nephropathy or hepatopathy which uh, it, it may be more, making the condition more worse coming to antenatal care they should have the routine blood investigations like cbc which rule out hiv hcg because they receive repeated transfusions all these uh, uh, other infections should be ruled out 
mother should be explained the importance of regular antenatal visits and uh, <clears throat> especially during the first two trimester blood pressure and urine analysis performed at each consultation especially midstream urine should be collected to rule out uh, urinary tract infection and for ruling out preeclampsia the blood pressure should be routinely monitored and they should be also advised about avoiding precipitating factors like exposure to extreme temperatures or uh, uh, making themselves dehydrated by not taking adequate fluids or exerting themselves too much to cause sweating and dehydration and uh, repeated vomiting vomiting in the first trimester hyperemesis can cause dehydration and precipitate a crisis so hence they should seek medical advice at the earliest women who are at risk of preeclampsia are advised low dose aspirin 75 mg from 12 weeks of gestation unless they have any aspirin sensitivity and prophylactic transfusion is not recommended because it can cause aluminization iron overload transfusion reaction and infections and transfusion is indicated only in case of severe anemia and exchange transfusion is recommended in case of stroke or acute chest syndrome so these two conditions warrant an immediate emergency exchange transfusion coming to the intrapartum care delivery of uh, mother should be conducted in a center well equipped with all healthcare facilities you can't do it in a phc or a taluk headquarters hospital where there is no blood bank at all so this is a very very important thing they should be immediately referred and this chart i picked up from the bja which is very useful so what are all the systems affected you can get the respiratory system the complication is hcs and uh, You know, what is the treatment is baseline of penis perforation and cretaceous investigation similarly cardiovascular system you have to think about pulmonary hypertension and ventricular dysfunction and so ka echocardiogram will be able to give you the value neurological rule out any stroke earlier neurological chronic anemia aluminization or painful crisis because of tickling and musculoskeletal they can have avascular necrosis of the inner head and they can have renal insufficiency and immunologically because of the loss of splenic function they are prone for infection so antibiotic prophylaxis is a must so these are all the changes that are happening when the hypertension affects adults with the uh, bss that is the homozygous variety and the uh, echo will help you and because of the increased cardiac uh, output and reduced blood viscosity the pulmonary vascular resistance is lower than in non anemic patients so surprisingly the pulmonary hypertension even though it is there the pulmonary vascular resistance in patients with uh, the cd is low so the usual treatment modalities like giving a pulmonary vasodilator will not be effective in these patients that is where the just the difference between the regular pulmonary hypertension and this particular condition so the main idea is to prevent the microthrombi so you should have to avoid the crisis or the uh, occlusion to the microthrombi the metrological system we must do the baseline hemoglobin reticulocyte presence indicates the active bone marrow sometimes you know you may have a aplastic crisis also in sickle cell where all the cells produced by the bone marrow are reduced so if you find the reticulocyte uh, numbers are increased that means you should be happy that the bone marrow is active and the electrophoresis for hcs variety should be done and the pregnant woman with a cd with a normal growing fetus with uh, no major superficial crisis in her uh, earlier life they can be offered elective birth that they can go for natural vaginal delivery through infection after the 38 to 40 weeks of gestation and uh, this is uh, the this is not a direct contraindication for attempt to vaginal delivery or vaginal birth after cesarean section what is this vaginal birth after cesarean section any idea try Have you heard of this terminology, vaginal birth after cesarean section? You know the short note questions in the 
oxidic part of our anesthesia. Okay, read about it and tell me in the next class. If there is any indication for inventing class complication, cesarean can be considered. And a woman should be kept warm with adequate hydration and the use of analgesic pain must be controlled if you are planning for normal vaginal delivery. Epidural anesthesia is very useful for a normal delivery plan. The, you must may shorten the duration of labor as much as possible by inducing with oxytocin and other drugs. And continuous intrabottom electronic fetal heart monitoring is very, very important to assess the risk of the fetus. And always blood should be cross matched and kept ready at the time of delivery for all patients with sickle cell disease. And final anesthesia has better maternal and fetal outcome compared to GA. And intraoperative blood loss was significantly lower in final. And central uraxial blockade. If it is not category one cesarean section and you have time, then you can perform a combined spinal or epidural also and uh, monitor the patient for any sickle related complications like chest pain, which may indicate ACS. So you can uh, just like uh, uh, monitoring a patient for any acute coronary syndrome, you can monitor. Uh, patient uh, like in PURP, you want to assess the uh, heart syndrome by so keeping the patient conscious. Akin to that, you can by keeping the patient conscious, you can diagnose ACS very fast. Then infusion of phenylephrine should be used to maintain systolic pressure more than 90% of baseline, and you must use warm IV crystalloid fluids. And relaxation of uterine smooth muscle with the inhalation agents may increase the risk of bleeding and uh, worsen the pre existing anemia and make uh, more need for complex uh, blood transfusions. And if general anesthesia is required, for example, there is a, a very severe uh, bradycardia in the fetus and there is no time to perform even a rapid sequence to spinal, then when you give GA, make sure that you have the good oxygenation and transposition and high flow nasal oxygen before intubation because during that time only you will pass hypoxia. And general intraoperative care, a okay, patient with a risk of complication, with frequent crisis, history of ACS are all indicated that it's a very severe form of sickle cell disease. So meticulous maintenance of normal pernia, oxygenation, perfusion, and this thing be kept in mind. And uh, they may have multifactorial reduced oxygen delivery capability, not only because of uh, anemia, but pulmonary condition, vascular, uh, impaired vascular regulation. And they cannot tolerate even very mild hypoxemia. Broad spectrum antibiotics should be given at least 60 minutes before any operative skin incision. For instrumental delivery, history of avascular necrosis of hip or joint replacement may affect the positioning. Ensure that the operating theater is uh, kept warm by appropriate setting of the air conditioner. And fluid warmers and post air warmers are very, very important to maintain normal thermia. And prophylactic antiemetics can be given to minimize the risk of nausea and vomiting, which may impede oral intake and cause dehydration. And postpartum and postoperative management, the risk of painful crisis and other complications, they do continue in the postoperative period also. So you have to be very watchful. Give them good pain uh, relief. Surgical intervention should be cared for high, de uh, high dependency area where you can, uh, if needed, go for invasive monitoring and non invasive respiratory support. High quality multimodal post operative analgesia, ideally involving neuroactive opioids, is essential for minimizing the risk of precipitating a crisis or a complication. And effective analgesia is crucial for early mobilization also during early postpartum period when the patients are at risk of thromboembolism. And also minimize hypoventilation and atelectasis secondary to pain, which could precipitate an acute chest syndrome. So incentive spirometry and CPAP can be used, particularly after general anesthesia and early mobilization encourage. And thromboprophylaxis with LNH for 
Pray for seven days following discharge after vaginal delivery. And I'm sorry, not 12 weeks, but six weeks after cesarean section. So these are all the points that I will share with you for this question. Okay.